The CEO of the biggest battery company in the world said that the 4680 battery cell is doomed to fail and will never be successful. The CEO of Catal, CATL, the world's biggest battery company, Robin Denholm, he's, he's come out and said some, some very interesting things that I don't know if this is going to turn out well for them. I mean, I think Elon Musk, I think he's going to be pretty unhappy about these comments. 4680 battery cell. The biggest battery company in the world says it's destined to fail. And basically they've outlined the reasons why it won't succeed. Now, let's have a look at those reasons and then I'm going to tell you what I think. I mean, yes, I'm not a battery engineer, but sometimes the reason a battery succeeds is not necessarily because it has the best chemistry or is the fastest to produce. There's other geopolitical factors that can come into play. And that's something that sometimes I've found in dealing with the Chinese, they don't always consider. There is a little bit of arrogance in China. There's no mistake to say that. I think that's true. And you'll find a lot of journalists will actually say the same thing. So even though Cable are the biggest battery company in the world, that doesn't mean their CEO is immune from potentially a little bit of hubris. And that could be what's coming across here. But let's look at what he said. Hello, my friends. Welcome to the channel. I'm Sam Evans. You're watching The Electric Viking. Great to have you with us. If you can support us on Patreon, that would be great. I'll put a link in the description below. That does keep the, the channel going. In a conversation uh, not that long ago, uh, the, the chairman, or basically the CEO of Cadle, the biggest battery company in the world, who the Chinese government are concerned have a monopoly. When the Chinese government makes a comment like that, you've got to be worried. That's what they said about Alibaba. What do you know? What happens to Alibaba? The company was split into pieces. Yeah, this could happen to Cadle. So if you're invested in Cadle, I'd be very concerned. That's a possibility. Now, keep in mind, that's to the Chinese. It's very hard to invest in Cadle um, if you're located outside of China. You can invest in BYD, you can invest in other companies, but Cadle, C-A-T-L, very difficult to do so. But I still warn people that if they are invested the Chinese government has issued, sent, made some pretty stern comments about them and they are scared of their dominance. But that tells you how successful they are as well, doesn't it? Apparently, there was a meeting with the CEO of Cadle and Elon Musk in Beijing. This was in April, but essentially we didn't know what happened during that meeting. Now we know what actually happened. Here's what happened. The CEO of Cadle and Musk got into a big debate we had a very big debate, he said, and I showed him. He was silent. He doesn't know how to make a battery. It's about electrochemistry. He's good for the chips, the software, the hardware, the mechanical things. Now, keep in mind, Robin Denholm, he is a battery expert, and that's his background. So Musk is, you know, he's good at doing lots of different things, but you can't really say Musk is a battery expert. That's not his background. He understands them, I'm sure. I'm pretty confident that um, this was a mistranslation. I don't think it's true to say he doesn't understand the electrochemistry, but maybe there's a lot more going on here. Now, in September, Tesla said it had produced 100 million 4680 battery cells after reaching 50 million units in June. So Tesla are clearly building a lot more 4680 battery cells, but Cato believes that the 4680 battery cell is destined to fail. Keep in mind, Cadle doesn't primarily use cylindrical battery cells like Tesla does. They use prismatic cells. So most of Cadle's batteries are prismatic batteries, LFP batteries, for example. Even the Chillin 2.0 battery, which is one of the highest energy density NCM batteries in the world, that's not a cylindrical battery cell. Now, interestingly, aside from the battery issue, CATL believe Tesla's approach to full self-driving makes the most sense and it's the most logical decision. That's what they claim anyway. Here's what Zhang said. He's all in. I think it's a good direction with full self-driving. But when it comes back to the batteries, he says that his problem is over-promising. I talked to him. Maybe something needs five years, but he says two years. I definitely asked him why. He told me he wants to push people to get things done. So Musk actually responded to these criticisms um, and here is what he said. He was responding to Dave Lee on X. He said, seems quite likely at least based on revenue in 2022 and 2023 possible units in 23. Basically Musk was, um, yeah, he was being optimistic and that's what was tweeted on X. Now he said, 
While certainly not perfect, my batting average for most predictions is quite good. My scheduled optimism, without which I probably wouldn't even have tried to do many endeavors, gets the best of me sometimes, but I always deliver in the end. Now, I think it's true. Musk is, he does overpromise, um, but generally he does deliver in the end. I mean, look at SpaceX. Holy hell, who would have predicted that would happen, right? The SpaceX would have just dominated the industry like they are today. But really, when it comes to batteries, the issue is this. 4680 battery cells. Yeah, you know, they're actually not too bad. The energy density is pretty good. But I think the point here that Cadle is making is this. They are more expensive to manufacture, right? And they take too long at this point in time. Now, I don't think it's about the electrochemistry because if you look at the energy density of 4680 battery cells, they're actually pretty good. I don't think that's the problem here. I think it's simply the cost to manufacture them. I think Robin Denholm, the CEO of Cadle is saying, yeah, you know, there's nothing necessarily wrong with them, but they cost too much to manufacture and they're too slow. Now, intriguingly, these comments have come to light after we now know Tesla is licensing Cadle's battery technology. I believe they're lithium ion phosphate batteries, probably the Shenzhen Plus battery. And that's a lithium ion phosphate battery that has 205 watt hours per kilogram of energy density. It's one of the highest energy density LFP batteries in the world. So Tesla will manufacture those batteries at their factory in Nevada, mass produce them. That could end up being Tesla's most highly mass produced battery in the United States. That's what a lot of people think is going to happen. So that's done and dusted. That deal is signed. Tesla is going ahead with that. Ford will be too. Ford are going to be yeah, basically making the same battery cells. Now, Here's what Zhang said. Originally, when we wanted to invest in America, the US government said no. For me, I'm really open-minded. I do hope that in the future, they are open to investments. But of course, Trump responded to this. Trump said, we're going to give incentives. And if China and other countries want to come here and sell the cars, they're going to build plants here and they're going to hire our workers. So Trump actually is all for this. Trump's like, well, Cable, if they want to come here and build a battery factory, they're welcome to do so, as long as they hire our workers in the United States. Now, this is not what other politicians have been saying. Other politicians have been saying no, period. No to Chinese factories, no whatsoever to any Chinese investment in the United States. But Trump actually is like, no, 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 we're all for it. Anyone wants to invest, come and invest here, employ our workers, that's fine. So that's an interesting, that's an interesting response. The 4680 battery cell, is it dead? I mean, uh, is it really going to, is it doomed to fail as the CEO of the world's biggest battery company claims? I don't think it is. Now, I think Tesla will will um, improve production, but I don't think it'll ever become Tesla's number one battery. As in, I don't think it'll ever become mass produced in large enough quantities to actually be, you know, in more than 50% of the cars that Tesla manufacture in the United States, Texas, Fremont, maybe even the Mexico factory as well. I think what will happen is that lithium ion phosphate batteries are much cheaper to produce, probably about half the price when they're mass producing them in big numbers. And because they have some pretty good advantages like their ability to handle cold temperatures now, those batteries have been significantly improved. That was one of the problems with LFP, charge the batteries in cold temperatures or have the cars in really, really, really cold temperatures and they have battery degradation issues. Well, that problem has been solved with Cadle's new Shenzhen Plus batteries. So I believe that most likely the LFP batteries will become predominantly the most important battery for Tesla. And even Tesla themselves said that's the case. Tesla's master plan even said that most of their cars would have LFP batteries, even those being manufactured in the United States. So I don't believe the 4680 will fail. It just won't become as big and as important as what many per people believe it will be. But I could be wrong. Let me know what your thoughts are. Thanks for watching.